Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60, and I'm starting on sorting out this head from the E90 engine. So if you haven't been following along, I have a lovely E92 335 that decided to lose some compression about a month ago now. However, I was lucky enough to buy an E90 so that I had a spare engine for just the occasion. Turns out the E90 engine is also problematic, uh, and we actually have just pulled the head off. So the last video on the channel is the head removal video. Let me just get some lights on. And it turns out that one of the exhaust valves wasn't sealing properly. Now, I wasn't sure if we were going to have a bent valve, a chip in the valve, a burnt valve, you know, all the, the normal serious issues. But it turns out all we actually had was carbon buildup. Now, yesterday, sorry there wasn't a video yesterday, we actually spent the day sorting out Dave's E39 M5, which is gone for a while. It's actually now at the panel shop. Uh, getting that and his parts car there was a bit of a, uh, bit of a dilemma. But yesterday I picked up some three bond engine conditioner. Now, I know a lot of guys suggested using the CRC intake valve cleaner. It's actually quite hard to get a hold of in, well, where we are in Sunny Coast. So I went with the three bond stuff, which a lot of mechanics and Aussies in general speak very highly of it. And I couldn't resist just giving it a go. So as soon as I got back yesterday, I actually sprayed some on the head. I started on this cylinder and I couldn't believe how quick it was dissolving the carbon. Um, and then I, I just sort of sprayed everything. And I have got some pictures and videos of what was going on, but it really did dissolve the carbon quite well. I've actually got the valve I'll just try and show you guys. I've got the valve sitting in some of the three bond that I just put in a container there yesterday. And it's to try and clean off the carbon from the bottom of the valve. It's super stubborn on the bottom. Anyway, on this video, I wanna see if I can get the valve to seal properly. I also picked up a lapping tool and some lapping compound. Now I've never done lapping before. I'm thinking, I guess I really should say, thank you to everyone that also made all the suggestions on what to do. Um, part of me wants to just sort this valve out and chuck the head back on. But let's be real, that's probably not a smart thing to do right now. Um, the smart thing to do would be send it to a machine shop and get them to do the head properly, check it over and get a professional to do all the work. But we're not gonna learn if I just pay someone to do everything. Uh, so I wanna learn how to do this. What I'm thinking at this point in time, I'm gonna see what's, what's involved in lapping the valve and see if I can get this to to seal again. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on lapping valves and by that I mean I've watched a couple of videos while I was on the toilet. So I think it's something I can do. If this all goes to plan, I will probably do all of the valves just as a bit of preventative maintenance. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're all sealing, but uh, anyway, for this video, let's get into it. Now, there was a ton of carbon on this. All I've done is sprayed that with the three bond stuff and then wiped it with, I had a really soft scour. It was actually for finishing paintwork. Um, that I wiped it off with, but you can see in there, there's still some marks on the valve seat. Uh, so it's not perfect. And the same with the valve, the actual seating surface is far from perfect. So let's see if we can clean that up with the, the paste and get it to seal. So when I was having a play with that three bond stuff yesterday, I had actually had the valve in the cylinder, in the head, I should say, seated like that and I actually filled the exhaust port up with the three bond stuff. Um, and it was mainly just to clean the exhaust port out, but I noticed that it was actually sealing at that point if I kept a little bit of pressure on it. However, the three bond stuff, when it's in a liquid, it's quite thick. So what I'm gonna try before I do anything else is I'm just gonna put some brake cleaner in the exhaust port and we'll see if, see if it will seal the brake cleaner. Now the brake cleaner is obviously a lot thinner liquid, lower viscosity, thinner viscosity I should say. Okay, that's a fair bit in the exhaust port. I'm gonna keep some pressure on because obviously it doesn't have a spring, but let's tip it up. Hopefully the camera can still pick this up. Okay, I can see. Uh, yep. So at that point in time, the brake cleaner, hopefully you can see on my finger, is not sealing. The valve is not sealing, I should say, and the brake cleaner is sticking out. If I just give it a poke, you'll see it all come out. Oh, bit of a waste of brake cleaner. Okay, so it definitely does need lapping. I'm just gonna get my little support rig set up again. Yes, yeah, so the valve definitely needs lapping. We'll get that out and let's give it a go. So I have this valve grinding paste. It was all the local store had in stock. It's got two grades in one coarse and fine. So let's start with the coarse one. Now, obviously, I've, as I said, I've never done valve lapping before, but from what I can see, it's pretty much like just polishing metal. I'm gonna give that a shake, actually. It says, use no oil or petrol. 
but do use water whilst you do it to help lubricate. So that looks like just chunks of metal. Now I am going to put a little bit of oil on the valve stem and it's just to help help it spin in the valve stem seal and I guess we don't want to get any of the abrasive anywhere but on the very tip. I'm not really sure the best way of doing this is I just put oil on my finger. There's a fairly large amount of water on the paste. Now I tried cleaning the face of the valve with a brass brush in a drill to get the carbon off the face. Uh, where do I put it? This little sucker here. Um, but yeah, it's just really stubborn. I cannot get that burnt carbon off the very face. And that's why it was soaking in the, um, why it was soaking in that three bond stuff overnight. So definitely no abrasive anywhere near the stem. See if we can get this thing to stick. It's stuck. Oh, that feels harsh. I really hope I'm not destroying an M54 head right now. I can hear the tone change. I'm trying not to do it too fast. Okay, let's see what that... Still a heap of abrasive on it. I'll keep going, because I'm only going for a few seconds. in the middle. Okay. Let's take her out. These cloths are full of brake cleaner and carbon removal. All right, so that's the first pass. That was probably 45 to 60 seconds with the core stuff. And it's definitely left lines in the, I guess it's carbon buildup on the valve, but it is starting to come clean. I'm gonna do another pass with the core stuff. I'm gonna increase the speed that I spin the tool just to see how that affects it. I'm just thinking of this like polishing metal, to be honest, but obviously it's all very hard metal. But yeah, the noise it makes is crazy how abrasive that sounds. All right, let's have a crack at it again. I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure we don't get any on the face of the valve. There's still a bit of oil on the stems, on the valve stem. Oh, it's so gritty. It's much more abrasive than I thought it was going to be. But hey, we learn as we go. So, 
think I might have got some compound on the suction cup then because it stopped sticking and started moving around all over the valve. That sounded a lot better. Let's see what the surface looks like now. Okay, the surface is getting cleaner and we're starting to get a distinctive ring all around it, which I'd say is where it's actually starting to seal. Let's get all this out. Okay, so the, the valve seat is also starting to get a polished ring on it. Um, not all the way around, which means I'm obviously not putting enough pressure that way, but it's got a very distinctive ring, unless it's the light. Yeah, it's not. It's got a very distinctive ring from sort of here all the way around to there, and then just this section here is not polished, um, but the valve has actually got that ring around most of it. So I've just got to keep going. I've got to do more of this. So I'm going to get on with it. My, my time lapse. Okay, so that's been three goes with the coarse stuff. That ring, which I mentioned in the last one, appears to have gone. So that was definitely the longest, the time lapse one was the longest amount of grinding I did. Like I said, I've got no idea how much needs to be done with each go. Um, I'm going to switch to the fine stuff and we'll just see what that does to the, uh, the visual appearance of both the valve seat and the valve. I mean, they both, they look completely different, but they don't look smooth. So I might need to do more, but we'll find out in a few seconds. So this is going to be a go with the fine, the fine paste. And we'll see if it sounds different as it's working its way in. Yeah, it doesn't feel as grindy at all. That coarse stuff literally feels like you got sand in there. This feels like it's polishing. I didn't mention it before as well, but I'm doing sort of backwards and forwards five or six goes, and then I'll do a double spin just to try and make sure the valves rotating as I do the, oh God. These things are awesome. Rotating as I do the seating, just so the valve's not sitting in exactly the same spot all the time. We have compromised the front surface so that the tool will not stick to the valve anymore. And it probably, it's probably made worse by the fact I couldn't clean that surface perfectly either. It actually sounds, oh, come on. because I can't get a consistent load on the valve. It moves and then you get a new chunk of valve seat compound fall into the seat section. <laughs> oh, this is crap. I had read that this happens. It just won't stick to the valve anymore. Let's see what it looks like. That's getting to the point where this doesn't want to turn the valve. So maybe the sealing surface is getting so good. It doesn't work. Let's see what this one looks like after the fine compound. Yeah, that actually, uh, the GoPro's not brilliant for it, but it actually looks all right. That looks quite, a quite uniform surface. It's definitely gonna, I'll do that again. Let's just check the valve seat. And the valve seat's looking a lot better. The, so the pit, there was like, there was a couple of, there were a couple of dots around the bottom section. I didn't know if they were still carbon or 
if it was pitted, but those dots are now gone. Try and get that with a photo. Um, all right, I'm gonna do another pass with the fine stuff. And I think then we'll try the brake cleaner again and see if it seals. I just thought I'd try and capture this on film because the, the sound that the abrasive makes is completely changed. And it's to the point where the, the valve seat tool uh, or the lapping tool won't actually hold the valve strong enough to spin it now. So I've got to put a fair bit of force with one hand, sort of turn it like a screwdriver. But it's gone, I don't even know if the mic will be picking that up. So that's the noise it's made. I, I read that once you've lapped the valve and it's got a good seat on it, the tone will completely change. Sure. Pull that out. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's now got a ring on it all the way around. I think that is now a lapped valve. It may need another go. Okay, we've got a very definitive ring on the valve seat now. So I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I think that means it's I think that means it's done. Where's the brake clean? That a good clean. Well, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try the brake clean again. It may need more, but let's just, let's just, for the sake of finding out if I'm overlapping the valves, I don't know if that's a thing. Obviously, if you do it for too long, you're grinding away material that you don't need to be grinding away. But let's pop that in. The stem is definitely clean. Okay. That's what it sounds like with no abrasive, which I think is relevant. Let's pop that light down. We'll fill that exhaust port up again uh, with the brake clean. Okay, that's a lot of brake clean. And we'll see, hopefully you guys can see, if we get any running down. Nothing yet. Yeah, the GoPro just went flat at the best time possible whilst I can't actually do anything about it because I'm holding this valve. But we're now up to about 15 seconds and there is no brake clean coming out of that valve. So I think we've resealed it, reseated it. I think. And there is, I don't know if you can see it, probably can't because it's pitch black in there, but yeah, that exhaust port's pretty much full of brake clean. So it'll be all the way around the valve. I think it's done, but I'm not really sure. Okay, I think I'll end this shot off here. I'll go and get a GoPro battery and I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Actually, I just thought to show you, I've, I'm not even keeping force on the valve now and it's not leaking. There is no weeping of the brake clean. <laughs> you can't see through. But there is a ton. You can just see it down the bottom there. Yeah, there's a heap of brake fluid in there. A brake clean in there. And she's sealed. You guys, you've got to let me know if that's going to be good enough. I feel like it is. So that's been sitting for a good 10 minutes now. And there's all the brake clean. Bloody hell. That was a lot. Um... Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Let's just have a quick look at those surfaces. So yeah, that's what it looks like, guys. Got a ring all the way around it that's pretty clear and the same on the valve seat. So like I said, I've never done 
valve reseating before. Um, but from what I've read, I think that's all you do. But please let me know if I've done something wrong. Don't use this as a guide, by the way, unless everyone in the comments says it is perfect. Um, and also, is using brake clean to check the sealing a safe enough method to ensure it's definitely gonna seal under running conditions? Um, but I, I think it will. I'm just not sure. Right. We're getting somewhere. So yeah, I think I, I'm happy with that, although I don't know if I should be or if I'm cocking it up, but yeah, I think we're getting somewhere. Now, I need to thank everyone that suggested what to do with the head from the last video. Um, it was funny, it was a pretty good mix of reseat the valve, slap it back on the engine and you're good to go, uh, versus people that said do all of the valves and all the valve stem seals, and then probably a similar amount of people said just take it to a machine shop. Um, I'm I think if, if that is the process of reseating a valve, that's probably taken me 10 minutes, maybe. And that was the first one, faffing about with the camera as well. Um, it probably wouldn't take too long to do all the valves. So I'm thinking about just reseating all the valves. Um, actually, what I'm actually thinking about doing is walnut blasting the intake side. So that should get all the carbon off of all of the intake valves. Not the seating side, but just get it all out of the intake valves and the intake ports. Give the rest of the head a good clean with the three bond carbon cleaner. Uh, clean out the exhaust ports with the three bond as well. Um, then removing all the valves and basically lapping them. I, it's gonna be about two weeks for the parts to arrive from FCP, so that's the head gasket and everything else to get this engine reassembled. Um, so I've got two weeks to, to do a few things to this. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm not sure if I'm risking disturbing something if I do remove all the other valves, even though they appear to be sealing fine. So is it bad to do that? Or should I do it as a bit of preventive maintenance, which is what some people call it. The other thing I'm thinking about doing, I'm trying to get a hold of that CRC intake cleaner. Uh, I know you guys can get it in the States really easy, but it's hard here. I'm going to have to mail order it to get it here, but I'm curious to see how it compares to the three bond because in Australia, everyone loves the three bond. Well, mechanics do, um, but I'm curious to see if the CRC stuff is better. I'm pretty in press with the three bond the way it sort of started dissolving the carbon that was caked on and I did actually try it on one of the piston tops as well yeah I'm really thinking clean all the carbon off it myself uh, I know I could go and get it hot tanked but again I want to learn and just go through the process myself um reseat the valves I don't know if I should change the valve stem seals I haven't ordered any yet but they're pretty cheap to get set locally anyway yeah but yeah let me know your thoughts I've got two weeks to to mess around with this and get it ready to go back on the uh, on the block. But yeah, for this video, I'm gonna end it off there. I'm not sure what else we got this week. I think I might get, I'll probably get the E92 in and on the hoist in the next couple of days um, and see if those rear brackets fit from Dickass, the, the third revision of them. And there's a few other things happening with that. We've actually got the, de the full detail happening on the E92 Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's gonna be pretty cool to see that transform. And I get to pick up the front bar on Friday from the panel shop as well. So even though it doesn't have a working engine, it uh, it's gonna look really good. So yeah, oh, I guess the other thing I need to do with that E92 is do a leak down test on it. The reason I haven't done it outside, um, it's just a pain in the ass to get a socket onto the crank to get it to top dead center. Just with the way everything's crammed in there, uh, it's just a nightmare. So I'll wait till I've got it on the hoist so I can get easy access to the crank hub, which will just save me some time getting it from top dead center. I know a lot of you people are thinking, why not just take the head off that car? And yeah, you're 100% right. This engine won't go into that car until I've done a leak down test and I know exactly what's wrong with it. But this engine does need to be fixed regardless of whether it's getting used now or if it's gonna sit aside for another project. Anyway, I'll end off there. Thank you very much. Really appreciate all the help and support you guys give. Um, and you sort of, I know I don't look very confident, but you do give me the confidence to do this sort of stuff myself instead of just palming the work off to someone else. Um, I think that's how you learn. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.